So indoor location has been one of these passions that for 20 years, the mission is to make indoor location on par, well, can make a must have in the industry, right? Some I've been working on since my aerospace adventure. And what we're doing here right now, we're starting to make marvelous location aware. And why is that important? It's important for things like coverage, right? We want marvelous to be started aware of what happens when people start to move their access points, right? And what we're announcing today is really the beginnings of identifying AP location, right? And this really brings in two pieces into the Marvis adventure. I mean, right now, when you take the MIST network and deploy it, if you look at the problems we have with location, one of them is really getting the whole deployment process easier. Now, we've made that easier with taking ECHAL designs, make it very easier to port these designs into MIST Marvis as part of the deployment process. You know, we've made it easier when deployers are actually deploying these access points, right, with the mobile app, making sure they actually take pictures, locate where these APs are getting deployed. Where we're taking the next step is really bringing auto AP placement to the party, right? This is verifying that APs are actually where they are supposed to be positioned. So this is probably the next big announcement is really, and this is all based on the fine time measurement of locating, making sure these access points are relatively located where they're supposed to be. And why is this important to Marvis? Bob, just interruption there. It's fine time measurement plus a lot of AIML right. happening in the back end. And that's probably the, you know, the other, the other algorithm I talked about is this graph algorithm is making sure we can actually locate these APs really. So there's a quadrilateral chain algorithm that actually once you know the relative location to the APs, there's a bunch of fancy math to make sure those APs fit that data, right? You can kind of visualize, right? Once I know the relative distance between APs, the question is how do you make sure you find the right geometry of where those AP codes? And that's the magic. Just a simple question. Is this so that if I, if my installer puts the AP at a location that's not, where it is on the map, it's going to adjust the map, or is it going to tell the installer you need to move this one three meters south because we'll get better results? It it is going to tell that it'll solve the problem of where APs lie about their location. So where the placement is on the map is right. The data doesn't match. Right. So yeah. So Keith, let's it's basically the the plan versus the actual right the age old problem. So. We take the, we already make it easy because we ingest that map with AP placements today in the MIST portal, right? But that plan says, oh, Mr. Insoller, put the AP here. Now the installer goes on site, says, ah, it's here or here, doesn't matter. Or in some cases I've heard it's opposite of the building also, right? So that's where they install. And we've had multiple customers report, hey, I'm troubleshooting a virus issue. It's on this AP 12, but this AP 12 is not where it's on the map. It's somewhere else. Can you help me fix that, right? Different floors, different areas. So just a quick one on, on the analysis of what's behind the scenes to make this happen. Yeah, so this is basically fine time measurement. Oh, we all know about the 11 MC. This is basically leveraging the fine time measurement. It has never become an industry standard in our clients. You know, we are working with uh, customers like Zebra that support it. It's usually not supported most of our phones, but we're really leveraging that to actually find the distance between these access points. And that's, and with the AI magic, that's what lets locate these APs accurately. Uh, the other thing we're starting to bring lat and long into location, and this is two reasons for doing this. One is for connectivity for Marvis, the other is for our indoor location services. With that, I think when you actually see the demo, you'll start to see the magic of this, of making sure these APs actually get put where they belong. There's probably the guest started a big retail customer that basically had the problem of complaining about coverage. There was an access point on the map, when they went to the back room, the access point wasn't there. Right. These, these are the type of problems you deal with in real deployments. And the, the two key things I want to talk about, like where does AI come into play? So you heard about RTT, you know, fine, uh, fine tune measurement. Yes, we are definitely adopting that, but that doesn't help solve non line of sight problems. And I have to solve in a healthcare deployment, in a school network, in a university, I have to be able to solve for verifying the location of an AP install, which is not line of sight. And that's where the AI ML engine comes into play to say, okay, what can I do in terms of, in addition to RTT fine tune measurement, where can I solve for the nylon site? So that's number one. Number two, we want to solve this, not just for greenfield deployments or installer going on site and putting an AP and how they can automatically place APs in a floor plan, 
We also want to solve this for brownfield deployments. So if our customers have been deployed with us for the last two or three or four years, we want to give them the benefit to get a view of the actual install versus what was a planned install on the Ekahau import. And I would take, take away from here is that fine time measurement thing. And probably the other thing is there's two key algorithms here. One is getting the APs placed correctly. The other key algorithm is dealing with none line of sight. You know, the good thing about fine time measurement, it works great line of sight. The question is how do you handle none line of sight? And that's probably the problem we can deal with. A question with the AP placement. Is, is there an assumption that all the APs will be ceiling mounted? Or what if you like mount APs on, on a wall or set it on a table or a cabinet? Would that have any impact? Initially, we're looking at the ceiling, that's 90% of the population. And then we'll evolve this with the antenna model to also look at tilt as well as, as XYZ height. And, and probably the other key thing I didn't mention is this also takes care of rotation. In addition to AP, it's actually doing the directionality, making sure the APs point in the right direction. Mm -hmm. and that's for a virtual BLE. Yeah. Location use case. That's a good one. But the, Could you yeah. help as vertical then? Yes. Yeah. We have the VBLE arrays for that. Exactly that. Kind of yeah. Thing. So really quickly from a, a demonstration perspective for Brownfield, right? What you'll see here is these are APs on a map, customer goes and clicks, and this is going to show up in the next couple of months on your dashboards. Customer goes and clicks auto locate, auto place. The backend system runs this magic and automatically will then place the APs in the right placements on the floor plan. So you don't have to do anything except say auto locate, auto place, right? And now let's get to- So maybe can I just add? Absolutely. On the, so on the orientation, Troy, um, it, it doesn't actually so much matter, right? We have a we have a accelerometer in the APs, so we know the orientation of the APs, but it doesn't so much matter the orientation for, for fine time measurement. Um, for connectivity or for lo for locating them. It's yeah. more for location, not for connectivity. Correct. Yeah. yeah. From a from a AP to AP placement, it doesn't so much matter. So you saw the magic we do for Brownfield, right? So imagine you heard about our large customers and they all want to get a better visibility of, hey, I know I gave a plan. I know the installer is a good installer, but we know it should happen. The Brownfield mechanism, no anchors needed. We will auto detect anchors. We will then place the grid for you and place the APs on the map. Again, Marv is coming into play, order remediation. All you say is authorize the action, Marv takes care of the rest. Now comes the green field. I'm deploying large networks today, multi-floor buildings, huge campuses, or thousands of branch locations. What can I do to save time during the install process, right? Today, uh, installer goes in, the map's already in the system. They either have the AP placements as per the Ekahau import, or if they haven't done that import, installers are going in and pulling APs from the sidebar and placing them on the map. Three APs, four APs, not a big deal. Start talking about 10, 20, 30 APs, and you have to do four or five sites a night. That becomes a nightmare. So what can we do from a greenfield install perspective to save the installer's time and therefore the end customer money because it's much faster now to get the network set up and get the real location of APs on the map. Again, no need for any adjacent technology. We're leveraging what we already have and our AI location engine to deliver this. So as the installer goes about their work, they essentially give us the measurement of just the first two or three APs they've deployed anywhere in the ceiling that they have. And then that's it. Once the installer gives us the, the measurement for, because we need some source of truth. And while the installer is doing their job, they're gonna give us, hey, here's the X, Y for this location by just putting it on the floor plan. That's it. Once they're done that, they go again and say, auto, just like you do RM optimize now, you now go and do auto place, auto locate. And there you see it. You take the action, the AI engine in the back end then runs its calculations, gets all the information about all the APs, and magic happens, literally. There you go. Um, it's as easy as that. How much time do you need? Can you do it as soon as you're done installing the last AP? That is correct. The, the, the goal that we have in the testing we've done so far is within 10 to 20 minutes, it should be all done. So the goal is to, like, when the installer is done, make sure that they're... Click on auto place and it happens. And then they can go home? Yeah. You don't have to come back the next day. You don't have to do a, you know, a site survey to validate. AI is doing the job for you. Yes, or well. After you do that auto um, placement, do you provide a deviation? Say I did upload a map using Ekahau and I have the AP placements there. 
but when you run this and it's all changed, will you give me that deviation? So in the brown field, we will be giving you a view also of this is where the AP actually. So right now you saw Marvis take care of it and just move the APs. What we're also looking at again is to give you the evidence to say and let you authorize that change because you may say, no, let the, the APs be where they're at, don't accept the change. Or you may say, let me send a tech on site to make that change happen, right? So that it, the reality matches what has been built. We will be able to give you a view of here's the AP placement that the location engine found, which is where this is where the AP is at as per the plan. Would you like to accept the new placement or would you like to trigger a, a tech workflow to go and move the AP? Okay. Is this GA today? For no, customers? this is in the works. We are going to be getting into betas, I would say, in the next couple of months. And you, but you will see this in the, I would say, early Q4 time frame. But we are super excited about this. We've, we've been quiet about this because we've been running our own simulation validations, large networks, small networks, domes, multi-floor. You all know about our NVIDIA deployment. Uh, we've actually tried this out there, done simulations to see how good we are. We are now confident we can ship this very soon. Yes. Still include in the Marvis license? This would be part Wi Fi, sort of part Marvis, correct? Yeah. Once you have this data, can you also then use the AI information to say you need another AP here? Bingo. So you talked, you heard Bob talk about the coverage whole aspect. Now that we'll get the actual AP placements, Marvis will already know there's a coverage whole problem, but it'll show you based on what was imported. That coverage hole efficacy becomes much higher now because we have the actual location of the AP. So absolutely yes. Short answer, yes. Sure. Yes. Uh, so the workflow for that is the um, is it auto placing them um, directly, or do you have to place those APs on the floor first and then auto placement occurs? Auto placement directly. Okay, so so because we will know the APs are the onboarded floor. into the organization. I hit auto place and they're on the floor. There you go. Perfect. Yes, sir. As a follow up to Keith's question, instead of adding APs, could it suggest moving APs for better placement of those APs on the map? So that we already do as part of our coverage hole, where we will say, uh, assume that the reality matches what was the plan. And our current Marvis Mar uh, coverage hole action will tell you if an AP placement is recommended or an ad is recommended. That, we, that is taken care of today. So I know I'm over time. Thank you so much. Okay, one last question just for you. Okay, I just have a quick question. I missed how many truths that you actually need to key in. And then I missed what the accuracy is. Is it like a meter, two meters? Two meters, 90% is what our current simulation is, is showing. We have okay. actually gotten less than one meter, but I'm not going to say that publicly. Oh, I just did. But no. <laughs> 90% is what I, what I stand by. And, and three truths, did you say, in terms of? For the greenfield deployments where we have no history and no data to collect, we look at at least three anchors. Yeah. yeah. But that is like while well, installed and installing, we have the mobile app. Yeah. They just point that mobile app, gets the XY, that it's as simple as that. Great. Okay. And this helps us to also solve the problem of I don't need, I know I'm not supposed to say this, and Bob said, Tony, don't say it, but I don't need an outside signal to tell me the location of my anchor, right? Because oftentimes you get in deployments where you don't have an outside satellite signal. What do you do there? So therefore, in this situation, I'm handling both the outside deployments, which have satellite signal, which I don't need, or internal deployments only, right? Again, think of, of hospitals and patient rooms and think of higher ed and, and hallways. You don't have on a side to an, a window that gives you some signal. All right, with that, over to the next session. Any last questions for Bob before we transition? Tom is here. Go ahead, Tom. Uh, anybody have any last questions for Bob? Yeah, I'm, I'm unmiking after this. Oh, well, then I do have one question, if I may. Mm. Going way back on one of your earlier slides when you showed the tools, there was a bunch of circles that said new. Is that what Marvis Release 7 is? Yes. So, so if you look in the, in the data science toolbox, I mean, the team is like this uh, quadral chain thing. That's a new algorithm for solving the geometry of auto AP placement. Okay. So that's a new algorithm that we've added into the toolboxes. And so if we define release seven, that's what it is. Yes, I would add that to release seven. That's great. Thank you. Bob, had what you had mentioned earlier about adding LATLAM. How does that interface with what you just mentioned? Is that? that that's for our location. There's two stories here. One is connectivity like Marvis, which is more around network operations. The other part is for our indoor location services. A lot of our mobile app customers want LATLAM to be returned. In this next why. And that ties back to the Marvis client Android Zebra Windows because that is essentially a combination of location and network. 
So that's how the lat long piece comes across across so, the board. So would we just set lat long on those three anchors? No, we would actually get the lat long from the client and then and do all the calculation in the back end. So all right, with that, thank you so much. And over on to the next session. Actually going to take a real quick break because we've uh, been up here for an hour and a half and we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to stretch their legs. We also